Hey guys, it's Becky, your DM. We've got a little bit of an unusual start to this episode. So before each session actually starts, I have the girls do what I call a dream sequence, where I kind of plop them into unusual situations and just to help them get more into character and to see how they'd react to different crazy things. And also as kind of a fun sandboxy way to play around in a world where there's no consequences because if you die you're in a dream and it's okay. But this week, the dream sequence that we did before our session kind of came into play a little bit um, during the actual episode. The dream sequences are available on Patreon, but I don't ever want our listeners to feel like they have to pay to be able to listen and understand and enjoy the whole show. So what I did is I basically kind of summed up uh, the major events that happened in this dream sequence. I will not do that again because, like I said, I just want this to be super accessible to everyone. So that is what we're starting this episode with. Here is the recap of the dream sequence that happened before the episode that will come up again in the episode. You are standing in a field of wildflowers. Trees dot the field every so often and you can hear birds chirping and the sun is shining down on you and it's just gorgeous. Roll for initiative. When you step on that orange flower, all of you turn invisible. Trigus, you suddenly know with every fiber of your being that you're a cat. (laughs) (laughs) That is horrific. Please don't step on an orange one. I'm not going to step on an orange one. Trigus, you grow four feet taller. Hello, little people. But you've also gained no mass, so you're extremely thin. Hello, everybody. Don't step on the yellow flowers. Your hands are suddenly covered in ice crystals. All of the items that you're carrying on you turn to bread. I'm scared of the orange flowers. (laughs) (laughs) And the blue flowers. Previously on the Dice Girls. I am a half-orc paladin, very devoted to the Church of Bahamut, who is a dragon. I would like your box of jewels. Ah, yes. Uh, Something about them is definitely intriguing. We've heard there's been some, uh, there have been some attacks on gnomes recently. Someone who's a much better judge of character than I am is is Romulus, and he works at the jeweler store in the Meath's. Maybe ask him a couple of questions and he might be willing to help you out a bit. The center shop has a big sign outside that says jeweler, and you can also see a flag hanging from one of the windows, and it is a patchwork flag. I might be able to help you out. Wait right here. Will our adventurers finally get some information about the gnomes? Will Romulus trust them? And who will Trigus insult this week? You're about to find out. With sugar and spice and a roll of the dice, you're listening to... The Dice Girls. After a few moments, Romulus comes back from the back room. You guys are standing on the other side of the counter, like you're in the shop area. He was behind the counter. And he comes back and he is holding a small wooden box and he looks at the three of you and he says listen i think i'm willing to share some information with you about the gnomes but i need you to do something for me first this is a very important box there's a very important item in here and i need you to take this to claire she is our mystic here in the neaths She's expecting this box, and between me and you, it's going to help the gnomes tremendously, the item that's in this box. I need you to take it to her, but it's very, very important that you do not open the box. Just deliver it to her closed, and then when you come back, I'll be happy to share with you what I know about the gnomes. Does that sound agreeable to the three of you? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, he holds out the box. Rocka takes it. Yeah, Rocka takes it. <laughs> <laughs> Before Trigus can take it, is that what that was? Yes. yes. <laughs> okay, Rocka takes the box, and Rocka, I want you to roll me a perception check. 16 minus one. <laughs> so 15. No, no, it's okay. 15. 15. Okay, so um, Rachna, as you take this box, you notice that the carvings on the wooden box 
are exactly the same carvings as the box of jewels that you bought from Hector. Ooh. I pull out my box of jewels from Hector <laughs> and say, do you know what this is? <laughs> when you pull out your box of, of jewels, you see a small look of surprise cross Romulus's face, but he gets it under control pretty quickly. Um, he, he holds his hand out kind of to ask if he can see your box. Uh, yeah. I'll give it to him. Yeah. Okay. So he takes your box of jewels. He opens it up and kind of examines the the five jewel stones that are inside. Um, and he seems he seems pretty pretty interested in them. He <laughs> he carefully you know one by one and in, inspects them and and kind of is nodding his head and says, these are very fascinating gemstones that you have here. They're they're obviously powerful in some in some way that regular gemstones aren't. I've never seen anything quite like this before. There is something odd about them, I do I do believe. I'm not sure exactly what they are. I wish I had more information about your stones. Um, it's what a wild coincidence that we have the same box. Um, I'm actually quite interested in these in these gemstones. They're so, some of them are a little more rare, um, you know, from the gemstones that that we have around here. Um, I don't know if you were aware, but Narstad has a mine, uh, a mining operation, and some of these gemstones are not found in our area. So, um, would you possibly be willing to to sell me these gemstones? <laughs> How much? Well, you've got you've got five nice stones here. Some of them are a little more common to our area, but I, I'm wondering if you'd be willing to part with them for 500 gold pieces. <laughs> uh, Rockna's eyes get real big. <laughs> Mara whispers in her ear, do it. <laughs> oh, we just met this guy. Like, I'm, I'm already pretty trusting, but I don't know if I'm that trusting yet. Do you know about what this inscription might have said? It was, it's not, uh, it's, it's scratched off. I saw that. I noticed that on the inside of your box. Um, no, I'm not sure. I mean, I know it's very common for when people gift items to each other to have things inscribed on the inside of, of boxes. I'll, I'll let you know if I'm willing to sell them when we get back. How about that? I need some time to think about it. That sounds fair. Absolutely. Great. Yes. Okay. And he closes your um, box and hands it back to you. Cool. Uh, where can we find Claire? So Claire has her, um, her shop... Um, at the other end of the street here. Um, so just head out the door and all the way down to the end of the row of shops in the knees and you should find Claire. Uh, guys, you ready? Yeah. Something. Yes. Rockna, roll me another perception check as you walk down the street with these gems. Six. Minus one. <laughs> <laughs> You are holding two boxes in your hand. <laughs> I put my box away. Okay. <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> I don't need to be holding that. Okay. Um, what do you guys think? I mean, that's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. <laughs> as far as I knew, those gems were useless. I bought them for five gold, guys. <laughs> should we Should we trust this guy? No. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how trusting you have to be to sell somebody something. <laughs> I just wonder if maybe there's something more to these gems yes. than what he's letting on. But 500 gold. I'm thinking. I could get a nice axe. If I you could get a really nice axe. <laughs> well, let's uh, let's go meet Claire, and uh, maybe she can tell us something else about Romulus before I decide whether we should sell these jewels <laughs> or not. But I'm really leaning towards selling these jewels. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, as you're walking down the street, I want Trigus and Mara to do a perception check. Fifteen. So do you have anything? Plus there? one. Okay. Okay. So Eight. sixteen. Seventeen. Plus four minus one. Hmm? So twenty. So, um, Mara and Trigus, you both notice as Rachna is carrying this this box that you suddenly feel you suddenly feel as if. There's something emanating power from within it. Mm. Trigus, don't you dare open, open that the box. box. No, <laughs> Trigus, don't you dare. Ragna tightens her grip on the box. <laughs> <laughs> We're not opening the box, Trigus. Just a peek. No. 
Tiny little crack. <laughs> Why don't you run? <laughs> Rock her speeds up. And I'll, and I'll restrain. <laughs> well, I don't think I can reach her. <laughs> yeah, Rock can just hold it over her head. Rock the whole box over her head. Like, keep away. You <laughs> toss the box to <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Uh, okay, so um, you don't let Tragus open the box. No, <laughs> I hold the box above my head with one hand, and I hold Tragus by the forehead. <laughs> <laughs> Tragus is just swinging. <laughs> oh, that's a beautiful visual. All right, so um, just down the street, you see the uh, you see the last shop in the row. It looks a little more run down than, than the other shops uh, in the Neaths, um, which were already not very ornate or fancy to begin with. Um, but this one, it seems a lot older. It seems it seems as if it's been here a lot longer than any of the other shops. And as you are approaching the doorway of uh, the shop, you see a, a woman step out. Um, she also appears to be extremely old. Um, she's, she's very short. Um, she's a little bit stout on the stout side. She's got silver hair and it, and it kind of shines like iron. And she has the most piercing green eyes that you've ever seen in your entire life. It's, it's very, very striking. Um, she kind of has olive colored skin. It's, very wrinkly. She's she's covered in wrinkles. And she almost has a little bit of a glow about her. But if you try to look directly at it, you can't really see it. It's it's almost something that you catch out of the corner of your eye as you're as you're looking around. Um she's wearing a white swath of fabric that's kind of draped around her, um, kind of toga style. And she sees the three of you and she gives you a smile. And Rachna's got the box over. <laughs> holding the box over. She uh, she smiles at the three of you, and she says, "The fireflies told me you were coming." Oh, oh, <laughs> my dear lady, you have the most glorious cracks in your face. <laughs> she grins. At so you. beautiful. She grins at you and nods. Why? Thank you. Thank you very much. You must be Claire. <laughs> I am Claire. You must be Rachna. <laughs> I am Rachna. <laughs> uh, my then... mirror says Avrin needs your help. What? <laughs> my mirror says Avrin needs your help. Me? <laughs> All of you. Even him? <laughs> <laughs> she nods. Can we go inside and talk more? I mean, wait. I have. I have a. I have this delivery for you. <laughs> That's more important. <laughs> <laughs> she smiles and, and, and kind of nods gratefully and, and takes the box from you and kind of tucks it under her arm and she turns and walks into her shop. Uh, let's spot them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you guys go in. It's, it's very dim. Uh, it's very dimly lit in here. There's a single table in the middle of the room. It's got a very long, plain tablecloth. And there are a couple of chairs sitting around it, and she sits in one of the chairs and places the box in front of her and gestures for the three of you to join her at the table. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll join her at the table. <laughs> Excitedly. <laughs> <laughs> she kind of looks at the three of you very... like she's inspecting you, almost. It's a little unnerving, actually. I would imagine especially so for uh -huh. Mara. <laughs> yeah. oh, yeah. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> I, yeah, I would, I would expect that Mara is, is a little nervous. I have messages for each of you. Would you like to hear them? Oh, God. Yes. <laughs> yeah, please. Uh, who, who are they from? My mirror, of course. Okay. <laughs> What's it got to say? <laughs> <laughs> you must all agree to hear the messages before I impart my wisdom. Yes. Yeah, okay. This, this isn't anything, like, private that I wouldn't want them to know or anything, is it? You don't know. Oh. <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> uh, okay, yes. Uh, yeah. Okay, and then um, she kind of stares into an empty space behind you, and she speaks three 
separate messages and doesn't address them to any of you, but you guys will be able to figure out whose <laughs> message is who. Her first message is, Ghosts of the past are nary fooled by the masquerades of the present. The dragon reveres the faith of the follower over the pretense of the parish. The legend of a people pales in comparison to the greatness its individuals can achieve. Rachna immediately, like, her face lights up a little because she knows as soon as she hears hers. And Rachna's face lights up and then she says a quiet little prayer to herself, thinking that she knows what this message means. As the two of you, Rachna, or not Rachna, I'm sorry, Mara, <laughs> as Mara and Trigus see Rachna kind of quickly bow her head at this table just for a moment, uh, it's very dimly lit in here, and the two of you notice a very faint, very brief golden glow in case Rachna, oh. as she says this prayer, it's very brief, <laughs> very faint. Rachna doesn't notice it because she's in prayer. Um, and then it disappears as quickly as it appeared. And Claire is smiling and, and nodding at the three of you. Mara's still pretty tense. <laughs> She's like, oh no. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think I don't think Ragna's even paying any mind to what your guys' messages are or what they mean or anything. She's not even trying to like deduce anything. <laughs> um, I got minus one in touches of wisdom anyways. <laughs> which one's which? <laughs> um, <laughs> So, uh, so do you know Rom Mulis personally? I have met with Rom many a time. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, can you tell me anything about this box of jewels I have? And I pull out the box of jewels and I showed her. She reaches out and and takes your box of gemstones, and when she opens it, her eyes get a little wide, and she looks very surprised to see the contents of the box, the five differently colored gemstones. And she thinks carefully before looking at you, and she says, These are not yours to use, but they cannot fall back into the hands that crafted them, nor can they yet be returned to those they belong to. And then she hands them back to you. Oh, yeah. Can't sell them. Um... <laughs> <laughs> uh, Romulus wanted to buy them. Do you think I should sell them to him? They are not yours to use, but they cannot fall back into the hands that crafted them, nor can they yet be returned to those they belong to. She basically just repeats her message. So that's, that's I think okay. that's a no. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you know what this inscription said? Can you tell me what this inscription said? <laughs> I can tell you that all is not lost. Okay, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um... Alright, so I'll, I'll put my box away and say, sorry guys, I think that means that we're not selling them. I know. <laughs> now Mara's tense and sad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having a great time with this lady. <laughs> um, can we trust Romulus? Do you know what's going on with the, with the gnomes disappearing? You know about the one we, uh, his head? Um, can you tell us anything about what's happening? <laughs> When you mention the gnomes, her her posture changes a little bit. She becomes serious, and and you can see that what she's about to say is of utmost importance to her. And she looks again, kind of past you. She's not she's not making a lot of eye contact with you guys. It's almost as if she's communicating with someone else. She says, "Avrin needs your help." Cities will be destroyed. The nightmares are real. The shattered walk the earth. And then her posture changes back to the more relaxed state, and she looks a little tired. <laughs> We're asking a lot. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, she's a mystic. She knew I would do this. Um, <laughs> should we trust Romulus? She thinks about it for a moment. And then, again, looks past all of you. Romulus can lead you to some very important information. Can he bring us to the little people? <laughs> she smiles a little bit at, at you, Trigus. Romulus can lead you to some very important information. I think she is broken. <laughs> <laughs> she smiles again. Trigus. <laughs> okay, we've... 
uh, we've we've asked a lot. I think we've done our job here, and uh, uh, thank you. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Do, does that help? Kind of. <laughs> she says, "You may tell Rom that you have passed the test." And she oh. gestures for the three of you to exit. Gestures towards the door. <laughs> Does that mean Rana we get to... skips out? <laughs> yeah, this is the well, kind of like she's like half like s- sweating like crazy now that she knew that she was being te- or found out she was being tested. But then after the wave of like terror comes the comes the excitement that whatever test that was we totally passed it nailed it. Um, <laughs> So, all right, uh, I can take a hint. I'm going to leave. <laughs> all right, so you step outside of Claire's mystic shop. Should we go back to Romulus and tell him we passed the test? Uh, yeah, let's do that. Guys, that was weird. That was really weird. <laughs> I wish I could have asked her more, but what do you think? What do you think she meant? She said that we were, she said that Avra needs our help from all three of us. Like, what do you think that means? I think we can save the little people. I think that... There's a spell over Avrin. Yeah, it does seem like something... Something's going on. <laughs> yeah, something pretty sinister is going on. Let's go talk to Romulus. Rockna's still kind of like, she's excited thinking <laughs> about it, but also like super weirded out, but also like super excited, <laughs> but also like a little weirded out, but also... <laughs> <laughs> and she has like a nice like feel-good moment where she thinks about this weird prophecy and Bahamut. All right, so the three of you head back to Romulus's jewelry shop. You walk back in and he sees the three of you and he, he looks up and he looks pretty hopeful. Claire said we passed the test. <laughs> <laughs> he grins and nods and smiles at the three of you. I suspected as much. If you had failed the test, I don't think you would have been coming back here in one piece. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh no! <laughs> what was the test? Not to open the box. Oh, oh, sweet. <laughs> well, that's just because I'm tall. I got to. I was able to hold it up. I'm glad I was able to stop you from opening the box. Mm-hmm. That's what happened, Triggis. Yes, you knew it was a bad idea. <laughs> Seems the three of you make quite a good team for each other. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> I am. I am happy that we pleased the broken woman. Oh. <laughs> Um, the woman with the cracked face, you know her? Yes, Claire. Yeah, she's very lovely. She's very dear to our community, yes. <laughs> Hopefully she was able to impart you with some interesting information. Uh-huh. <laughs> she said that Avrin needs us. He looks very interested when you say that. He looks a little surprised. He arches his eyebrows and and kind of nods a little bit and says, Well, if that's what she said, then it must be true. How do we help? Um, well, that's a good question. Uh, what was your name? Trigus Garganath. Trigus Garganath. And yes. I'm sorry, I don't know any of your names <laughs> now that I think about it. You all know me as Romulus, but you may call me Rom. And and Trigus, it's very nice to meet you. Thank What's you. What's your name, young lady? Uh, Mara. Mara. Very nice to meet you as well. And I'm Rachna. Rachna. Welcome to my shop. Welcome to Narstad. And... He kind of looks around and his voice gets a little quieter. Welcome to the known resistance. (gasps) (laughs) I just got the chills. Hey everybody, it is Seth, the DM for Cheaper by the Dungeon, and we are a D&D 5th edition podcast. Uh, our whole deal for our campaign currently is kind of treasure hunter themed. Uh, the players Normandy, Zippy, and Darian are looking for a grand treasure, but at the same time they'll probably screw it up and do whatever they want and become like farmers or something. Uh, either way, it'll be a fun time. You can find us anywhere you get your podcasts, which is like Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, any other ones I'm missing, which is probably a lot. But anyways, we just like to have fun, hang out, and uh, screw up my DMing and plans. So, so if you like that, tune in. Uh, we release every kind of other Tuesday. So hopefully uh, come in and check our show out. Thanks, everybody. Hey, guys. It's Becca here, your DM, and it's time for another Dice Girl solo. There's a lot of fun stuff going on, so we're just going to jump right into it. 
First of all, I want to say hello and thank you to our newest patron on Patreon, Rosemary. Thank you so much for listening to the show and for becoming a patron on Patreon. If you haven't yet, make sure you check out our Patreon page. It's patreon.com slash the Dice Girls. We post things on there every single weekday, whether it's behind the scenes, uh, my notes about how the session went. Ashley does some doodles every Friday. And you can also get like a deeper look into the world of Avrin at large. There's a lot of content on there, you guys. So check it out. Again, it's patreon.com slash the Dice Girls. We've got a couple other shout outs that we want to do this week. First of all, we want to shout out Vagrants and Vagabonds, their Twitch channel, and they have some amazing characters on there. I want to say thank you to Bill for talking about us on their latest stream. Make sure you go and check them out. It's twitch.tv slash vagrants underscore and underscore vagabonds. And thanks again to them for mentioning us on their Twitch stream. Another Twitch channel I want to mention is Myriad Ventures. They are so much fun to watch, you guys. They were pretty much the first people to reach out to us on Twitter when we launched to see if we needed any help or anything like that. And it's been fantastic uh, chatting with them and and watching their stream. So if you want to check them out, make sure you do. It's twitch.tv slash the Myriad Ventures. We have some exciting things coming up really soon, actually tomorrow, so December the 4th. All four of us Dice Girls are going to be on the Friendly Dungeon Masters Fireside Chat on their Twitch channel. Chris has been absolutely fantastic to get to know, and that is going to be at 5 p.m. Mountain Time, uh, again tomorrow, December 4th, and it's on twitch.tv slash the Friendly Dungeon Master, so make sure you catch us on there, and also subscribe to his Twitch channel. The other exciting thing that's coming up is I'm going to be playing my very first one shot on Twitch on Scraticus Academy coming up on December 16th. That is going to be at 8 p.m. Mountain Time and you can catch it at twitch.tv slash Scraticus. All of these events and our Patreon release schedule and our episode release schedule can be found on our website at thedicegirlspodcast.com. I think that's it for me. Uh, Thanks for listening and hopefully you enjoy the rest of the show. get big so you help the little people i do i think we need a more secure place to talk Mm -hmm. if that is okay with the three of you yeah yes okay then give me a moment to close up my shop and um we will go somewhere where it's more safe to speak openly about such matters he takes a few moments and and kind of puts covers on all the display cases of his of his jewelry shop. He kind of empties out the the cash drawer and you know just the general closing up shop um, actions. And then um, he he starts to head towards the door and motions for you to follow him. Cool, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> all right. He shuts off the lights. Uh, he he closes the door and locks it behind him and um, puts up a, a closed sign. So uh, you three follow Rom down the street and he takes you into the apothecary of the Neaths, where you find an elf working there, um, a tall, slender, brown-haired elfin, elfin man. Rom greets the elf and asks him for three vials of extra-strength hair regrowth potion. And the elf nods knowingly, goes back into his workshop in the back of his shop. Are we getting more hair? <laughs> Rom smiles at you and, and, and kind of snickers a little bit. Not exactly. (laughs) You guys are standing there waiting, and after about five minutes or so, the elven shopkeeper for the apothecary returns with three vials of swirly purple and pink liquid. And uh, Rom reaches into a little satchel that he's wearing and and tries... He pulls out some gold uh, to hand to the elf, and the elf shakes his head and says, No, no, no. I do what I can to help out. It's on the house. And Rom says, thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, he turns to leave the shop. Do we drink? He's got, Rom Rom has the the three vials with him. Okay, let's go with Rom. Yeah, let's follow him. (laughs) We're not drinking the pretty liquid? Let's let's just follow him. Okay. Okay. (laughs) Okay. 
You follow Romulus towards what you are assuming is the center uh, of town. Uh, as you head towards the center of Narstad, you can see what kind of looks like a town square. There's uh, the road that you've been walking along has been cobblestone. As you get closer to the, the center part of it, the square, uh, the cobblestone has been painted in bright colors. And you see a large, ornate stone fountain in the very center of the square. It's flowing with crystal blue water. And there's a big, ornate stone flower carved into the fountain. Uh, around the edge of the square, you see small vendors. They have set up tables around the edges of the square. They seem to be selling random uh, random odds and ends. Um, as you're walking towards the center of town, you see that the market stalls are, are quite busy. The streets around the fountain are crowded with all sorts of people. And he stops right in front of the fountain. And he looks at the three of you and says, do you trust me? Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Mara looks a little unsure. I think Mara has a hard time trusting people. That's probably fair. All right. Then listen very carefully. Count to ten. Close your eyes. And don't open them again until you've counted to ten again. Does everyone understand? Yeah. It's very important that you follow these directions. Trigus, are you going to follow the directions? Yes. <laughs> Okay, um, while the three of you are counting to ten with your eyes open, you see Rom make eye contact with a vendor whose stall appears to be full of potions. And just very imperceptibly, almost, you see him give a very small nod to that vendor, uh, the potion vendor. Right about when you reach ten and close your eyes, I'm assuming you all close your eyes? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You hear the shattering of glass, and you hear a loud bang, uh, accompanied by immediate screams of confusion. Oh my god. Through your eyelids, you see a flash of extremely bright light. And you hear the vendor of the potion stall loudly apologizing. I'm so sorry! I'm so sorry! I accidentally broke a simple flash potion! Uh, everyone, it's okay. Your your blindness will fade, and your vision will be returned to you in about 60 seconds. And then the three of you uh, are able to open your eyes. You reach 10. Oh, you didn't see the flash. <laughs> <laughs> and you can see some mass confusion going on. But uh, you, you look around, and Ron silently gestures for you to follow him as he climbs straight into the fountain and starts heading toward the flower in the center. Ooh. For a second, I was worried that we locked ourselves in with some terrorists. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are they throwing bombs at people? What have we done? Uh, yeah, I follow. Them. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, the huge stone flower in the center of the fountain, you notice as you get closer that its petals are encrusted with gemstones, and you see Rom press a sequence of gemstones, and the center of the flower silently opens up. Uh, it's a very, very big, ornate flower, revealing a long, narrow tunnel lined with torches. Mm. And Rom has quickly started making his way down the tunnel. I think we quickly follow. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, as soon as the last of you, what order are you stepping in? I'll go first. I feel like I should bring up the rear. So I'll go as I can. But <laughs> yeah, you're kind of shoving them. Make sure it goes in. <laughs> okay. All right. As soon as you step past the opening, the flower again silently starts to close. Um, behind you and as as soon as it's closed it's uh you can't hear any of the confusion or the scene that was in the the town square behind you uh romulus is headed down this long narrow tunnel way again it's lined on both sides with torches um and uh as he gets to the end of the tunnel um he stops and he turns to you and hands you each a vial with the pink and purple swirly liquid in it. This is not going to taste great, oh. but it's important that you that you drink this this vial for more hair. <laughs> that is what we ask for at the apothecary in order to get this this particular potion. What will happen to us when we It will protect drink you. you. Oh. oh. We need protecting for this next part of the journey you do. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, how long does it last? You only have to drink it once, and then you are protected from the effects forever. Oh. Oh, oh okay. 
Um, will there be fairy eels? I'm sorry, will there be what? The um, dangerous fairy eels Rum that attacked at, us. Rom looks at Rachna and Trigus. Or okay. Ra- Rachna and Mara. We, we met some flying snakes. Oh, it, it was flying a... Snakes. It was a it was a ordeal. <laughs> it was an ordeal. Uh, let's let's just drink, let's drink the potions. Yeah. Yeah. There are no flying snakes in this next part. Oh, sir. thank you, sir. <laughs> yes, of course. Okay, uh, Rockna pops hers open and and tries to chug it as quickly as possible. Yeah, same. Me too. <laughs> it doesn't taste great. Mm, it's pretty gross. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, as you drink it, you feel a cold kind of prickling sensation uh, run through your body and. Um, as the strange feeling subsides, uh, you notice almost that you feel like you're wearing a second skin over your own. It almost feels kind of like you're wearing an invisible wetsuit. <laughs> if any of your characters knew what a wetsuit is. <laughs> no, your, your character definitely wouldn't need to know what a wetsuit is. Uh, it's, it's very interesting. And the feeling doesn't last for very long. It does fade. You get accustomed to it quite, uh, quite quickly. But you can sense that it's still, the potion is still in effect. And um, you peek around Romulus and you notice that there's another large stone flower at the end of this hallway. Again, the petals are encrusted with gemstones. And he pushes another sequence of gemstones on one of the petals. And the center of the flower opens up. And he steps out into a field of wildflowers. Oh, oh no. Of every color imaginable. Rachna bristles. <laughs> <laughs> but she just tenses up a little bit for a second before <laughs> chilling out. Um, you see Romulus step into the field of wildflowers and begin walking towards a uh, a hill that is in it's a ro- it's a rolling field of of wildflowers, there's hills. Um, trees dot the the field every so often. You can hear birds chirping. The sky is very blue, and, and the sun is shining down on you. And is there a rainbow? <laughs> <laughs> there is no rainbow in the sky. Okay. Rachna still steps only where <laughs> only where Ram has stepped. <laughs> and no then we're just, we're just kind of she... looking like. Yeah, do you go say anything to her? She's first. She's just walking like an idiot through this field of flowers. <laughs> oh, yeah, hey, oh. what's up with you? <laughs> I just had a, a pretty weird dream. I dreamed about a field of flowers that looked just like this. Only it was bad. <laughs> but it was just a dream. But it was the same field of flowers. Uh, I'm sure it's fine. Don't mind me. <laughs> I'm a little nervous about it, I guess, but... Uh, and I think after the first few steps of, like, only exactly retracing Romulus' steps, and once I realize that nothing is happening, then I kind of, like, lose the tension and, and start, start walking normally. <laughs> <laughs> so Ram is a couple of steps ahead of you, and he kind of senses that you're not directly behind him anymore. You've kind of maybe slowed a little to have this uh, conversation, and he turns around and kind of cocks his head a little and looks at you guys questioningly. Is everything okay? I've seen these flowers before in a dream. Really? It was a bad dream. <laughs> well, that's very interesting, actually. Um, these flowers are these flowers are, are wild flowers. Not like your regular wild flowers. Maybe think with a capital W wild. Um, have any of you ever heard of wild mages? No. No. So wild mages tap into the energy of the earth to get their power, but that does not come without consequences. And sometimes surges of wild magic happens. And the um, effects of that wild magic are unpredictable and quite quite wild to to for lack of a better a better word a long time ago a wild mage managed to infuse these flowers with those surges and when their pollen is um disturbed or 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 spread the effects from the surges start going off and it can be quite disastrous luckily the potion that you drink um, makes you immune to these flowers Forever. Oh. oh. Why did I dream about these already? That is a very interesting question. 
Maybe it's something you could ask Claire about the next time you see her. She might have more insight into that than I would. She deals more in that area. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> Shall we continue? Okay. In any yeah. case, these flowers are of no danger to you any longer. Mm. Cool. Okay, I'm walking normally <laughs> now. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Romulus leads you to the largest hill in the field of wildflowers, and he appears to kind of pull on a specific patch of grass. And before your eyes, a small round door opens up into the side of the hill, and you suddenly find yourself standing in front of a small room in the hill. Um, and inside this room, you see 40 to 50 gnomes. They're all wearing patchwork cloaks. Oh. And as the door opens up, they <laughs> turn to look at you, and you can tell that they were in the, in the middle of something. Um, there's a, a young, spry-looking gnome man towards the front of the room facing all of them. He was, he was, he was speaking to them, and as this door opens up, all 40 to 50 <laughs> or so of these gnomes turn to look at you. What ho, tiny men! 